President Biden touched down in Portland just before 6.30 tonight. It's his second visit to the Rose City in just six months. The main purpose this time, to drum up support for Democrats, especially Tina Kotek, who's in a very close race for Oregon governor. There are, of course, some tight congressional races in the state as well. And right now, the president is overnighting downtown. Let's give you a live look just a few blocks away from Pioneer Courthouse Square. Security there is tight. You see streets blocked off until tomorrow evening when Air Force One is wheels up. We'll have more on the closures and the timing in just a few minutes. Well, thanks for joining us this Friday. I'm David Molko. And I'm Laurel Porter. Tonight, we have team coverage of the president's visit for you. Catherine Cook joins us from where we believe the president is staying tonight. And Alma McCarty will give us a look ahead to his plans for tomorrow. But we're going to begin with Kyle Eboshi in the newsroom, who is at the president's first stop. Kyle, the president kind of rolled up his sleeves and spent some time working the phones. David, President Biden made several calls at one point, pacing around the room with an iPhone to his ear. The president told supporters this is one of the most important off-year elections in decades. Hello, Oregon. President Joe Biden greeted Democratic campaign volunteers with a box of donuts. The president energized a crowd of nearly 100 union members and supporters in southeast Portland by describing the importance of the upcoming midterm elections. If we are able to keep the House and keep the Senate, we can continue to do the things we've been doing, which are really going to make change the country. Biden's visit to the SEIU 49 Union Hall comes at a critical time for Oregon Democrats. Recent polling suggests Democrat Tina Kotek is deadlocked with Republican Christine Drazen in Oregon's governor's race. Non-affiliated candidate Betsy Johnson is trailing. SEIU, the state's largest labor union, has put an unprecedented amount of money into backing Kotek, the Democrat. What a governor does matters. It matters. It matters, it matters, it matters. During his nearly hour-long visit, Biden joined campaign volunteers by working the phone. He made several calls and left quite an impression on those in the room. The emotion, oh, I want to scream. Well, I get to scream a little bit, but it was great. I've never, I've never seen a president like that before, uh, just to be, you know, so close. It was an amazing experience. I mean, President Biden was on, he was inspiring. It really was amazing to be in the room with him. The presidential motorcade left southeast Portland after a night of stumping with Democrats. The White House didn't disclose details about tonight's event in advance, so there really weren't that many people out to see the president. In fact, a few neighbors walked up to me asking, what exactly is going on here? But as word spread, a crowd started to gather on the sidewalk along southeast Powell, and they cheered as the presidential motorcade drove by. Yeah, there is nothing quite like a presidential visit. Donuts, too. Thank you, Kyle. And after that stop in southeast, President Biden's motorcade in that limo, affectionately known as the Beast, headed downtown. And that's where he'll be staying for the night. Our Catherine Cook is near the Dunaway Hotel on southwest Yamhill, which is surrounded by street closures and folks hoping to see the president there. Catherine. And Laurel, they're out of luck tonight. The president is safe in his hotel just a couple blocks from where we are. There is a tight security perimeter in this area, including this intersection, several blockades keeping people out. But what it's not doing is keeping people from watching and hoping to catch a glimpse of the president. In for the night. Around 8 p.m. Friday, President Biden's motorcade rolled into downtown Portland. By the looks of the security setup, though not officially confirmed, he's staying at the Dunaway Hotel on Southwest 6th and Taylor. Dozens of people stood behind police blockades hoping to see the commander in chief. It's really kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity, so I just decided to come down and see him. You know, e even if it's just a chance to look, see the motorcade or just a glimpse. This graph shows current street closures around the Dunaway Hotel for cars, TriMet, and pedestrians. Southwest Taylor and Yamhill are closed from Broadway to 4th Avenue, and Southwest 5th and 6th are closed from Salmon to Morrison. A Secret Service agent tells us they're likely to stay closed until around 6 p.m. Saturday night. For so many out here, it's exciting to see. We are looking for Biden. Four-year-old Larkin and her mom watched agents prepare for the president. I've shared with her, it's just really neat to see the motorcade come through. And if we could catch a glimpse of the president, that would be exciting. I've seen a few other presidents in my lifetime. A lot of folks are here on vacation, unaware that they'd be staying just blocks away from the president. They're like, oh yeah, and the president's coming. And we're like, 
Wait, what? <laughs> Hopefully uh, President Biden has as much fun here as uh, we have had in the past couple days. As much fun as a business trip could allow. We're just excited that he's here and and no matter what they say, he's he's the best president we could have right now. Back live in downtown Portland, a Secret Service agent tells me these closures should be in place until around 6 o'clock tomorrow night. So if you plan to be here in the downtown Portland area, just be aware there will be several detours. And if possible, it might be a good idea to just avoid this area altogether. David and Laurel, back to you. Love the mother-daughter there. You always get the best interviews. <laughs> Catherine Cook downtown. Thank you, Catherine. All right, let's talk about tomorrow when the commander-in-chief will be the star guest at a fundraiser for, yes, Tina Kotek. Before that, the president will make remarks, the White House says, about lowering costs for American families. Let's bring in Alma McCarty in southeast Portland. Alma, walk us through what we can expect. Well, Laurel, David, the president will be here at the East Portland Community Center around midday tomorrow. And even though this is a very quick trip, it is certainly a busy one. So let's talk about that timeline of events and really what we can expect. The president is going to be giving a speech here again at the community center around noon about lower drug costs for families. And following that event in southeast, he's taking part in a reception for for Tina Kotek at 145 at 250 Biden will depart Portland, making his way back to the East Coast to spend the weekend in Delaware. Circling back to that speech now, the president's focus will be on how the Inflation Reduction Act set to go into effect January 1st, 2023 will help people afford their prescriptions. This as open enrollment for Medicare begins. The message similar to what he said today in Orange County. This year the American people won. We took on Big Pharma and we beat them finally. We beat them finally. Now if Big Pharma tries to raise drug prices faster than inflation, they're going to have to write a check to Medicare for to cover the difference. Now instead of that money going in the pockets of drug companies, it's going to go into the pockets in the form of lower drug prices in America. There's more money. Now, again, that is the first that speech, I should say, is the first of two events formally announced by the White House earlier today for tomorrow, for Saturday. And again, you should probably expect some road closures as the president makes his way from downtown to southeast and then back again to the airport. David Laurel. Alma McCarty teeing it up for us tomorrow in southeast Portland. All right, while well, many Democrats are buzzing about the visit, Republicans are criticizing the candidates and the president. Kotex opponent in the governor's race, Christine Drazen, tweeting, quote, Oregonians are tired of status quo politicians like Tina Kotek and Kate Brown who have made life worse for families across this state. Bringing in a failing president isn't going to save a failing candidate, end quote. Meanwhile, unaffiliated candidate Betsy Johnson posted a video saying she hopes the president comes more often because it means homeless camps that she pointedly blamed on Kotek get cleaned up. She also said the president needs to talk to local officials about actually holding criminals accountable. And stay with us for continuing coverage of the president's visit tomorrow. You can watch his speech streaming on KGW.com or KGW Plus. And we'll have a wrap up of events later on KGW News. Busy 24 hours. All right, we're also following breaking news tonight. A police shooting in downtown Portland with at least one shot fired just as the president was arriving on the other side of the city. Witnesses tell us they saw an officer shoot a man near 12th and Jefferson. They shot this video just after it happened. They believe the man was hit in the arm. Police confirm he is expected to survive. Video shows the officers handcuffing him while he was on the ground afterward. What we don't know is what led up to this. The officers were responding to a report of a suspicious person with a weapon. The witnesses reported hearing commotion just before hearing one shot fired. The intersection is still blocked right now for the investigation. We'll keep pushing for more details on the case and we'll keep you updated. And about 90 minutes before that shooting, a man was killed 
In a homicide in northeast Portland, police found the man with a gunshot wound right across the street from Holiday Park in the Lloyd District. That was around 430. He died later in the hospital. So far, no one has been arrested and investigators have not released any information on a possible suspect. And we also want to note a serious crash tonight involving a MAX train. The train hit a person who was on the tracks in Beaverton. This is near Hawken Avenue and Millican Way. We're still waiting for word on the person's condition. Service is shut down on the blue line in that area with shuttle buses running between Elmonica and the Beaverton Transit Center.